What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. Welcome back to another installment in the Robert Zemeckis Marathon. And today's review closes his iconic trilogy of movies. Easily a really fun trilogy. I enjoy watching these movies. Today's review concludes that trilogy. It is Back to the Future Part 3. Before I go any further, I will leave a link down in the description below for all of the Robert Zemeckis reviews I've done for this marathon so far. Uh, if you, at the time of this video, I have reviews for the other two films in the Back to the Future trilogy. I've also done Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Romancing the Stone, and his earlier films such as I Want to Hold Your Hand and Use Cars. If you're a Robert Zemeckis fan, definitely check that playlist down below to see more. And I hope you enjoy this video. So Back to the Future Part 3 was the final installment of the Back to the Future trilogy. It was released in 1990. It was once again a collaboration between director Robert Zemeckis, writer-producer Bob Gale, and executive producer Steven Spielberg. So then Back to the Future Part 3, the final installment of the Back to the Future trilogy, we find Marty digging the trusty DeLorean out of a mine shaft and looking for Doc in the Wild West of 1885. But when their time machine breaks down, the travelers are stranded in a land of spurs. More problems arise when Doc falls for pretty school teacher Clara Clayton and Marty tangles with Buford Tannen. The movie once again stars Michael J. Fox as Marty McFly, Christopher Lloyd as Doc Brown. The movie also brings back Thomas F. Wilson and Leah Thompson. And the movie also adds Mary Steenberg into the cast list as Clara Clayton. So Back to the Future Part 3. For many people, a lot of people actually consider this uh, the weakest film in the trilogy. And in fact, the movie actually kind of underperformed at the box office compared to the other two films. It's the lowest grossing film in the trilogy. And I honestly don't get why people didn't get into this as much as the other two. I actually think this is the second best film in the trilogy. I like it a lot more than Back to the Future Part 2, and I think it's the most underrated film in the whole trilogy. Uh, well, the main reason why I prefer Part 3 over Part 2 is mainly the fact that the story, once again, is more self-contained compared to Part 2, where they went from one place to another place, another place. It seemed like they crammed a lot in just to make a more epic, ambitious sequel. It was still fun. If you saw my review, I still liked Back to the Future Part 2. Still gave it a really good score. 4 out of 5 is still really good. But I did have some issues with some of the narrative. And Part 3, I think, fixes a lot of the cluttering overstuffness of Part 2. And we're back in one main location, and we're in 1885 this time in the Wild West, and that is awesome. I love the Western vibe of Back to the Future Part 3. In fact, it was my enjoyment for Back to the Future Part 3 at such a young age that eventually got me in to exploring other Westerns. So I have to credit Back to the Future 3 for that. I love the Western vibe of this film, and I love how the movie plays with the Western genre while still being just as sharp and funny as the other two films. Uh, Marty comes in to this version of Hill Valley and uses the alias Clint Eastwood and so the movie kind of plays around with the Clint Eastwood movies and because of Marty's persona and now uh, he wants to prove that he's not a coward and a chicken. The fact that he's pretending to be Clint Eastwood just makes the whole thing so much funnier. The direction again is in top form from Robert Zemeckis. He clearly cared about making a satisfying closure to this trilogy. In fact, you know, him filming two and three back to back was a daunting task. And I felt like he succeeded with part three. And the movie does end on a very satisfying note. And it provides full closure that does tie all three movies together in a very satisfying way. And it's cool watching the three movies back to back because things you totally forget about in the other two movies are brought back to attention in the third film. And it makes the experience all the more satisfying when you see all the pieces together that they establish in all the movies. 
So it's really cool how they combine it all together. The performances are great once again, particularly from Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. Michael J. Fox is once again an absolute blast as Marty McFly, and I enjoy seeing his arc full circle when he realizes that his tantrums and his insecurities over being a coward and a chicken aren't isn't worth it in the end, let's put it that way. And I enjoyed seeing that angle play out throughout the film, but what I really love about Part 3 is the expansion of Doc Brown as a character. You learn more about him as a character, and I really like that they had a love interest for Doc in this film, because it definitely adds a more deeper human element to Doc that we haven't really seen in the other two films. He was more eccentric, and he was more scientifically minded, so to see him fall smitten with a girl at first sight just made that whole experience not only hilarious but also kind of sweet at the same time and I really enjoyed Mary Steenburgen in the love interest role of Clara and I like that she's not just a one-dimensional love interest character she adds a lot to this movie as well and provides a pivotal turn for the franchise as well especially in the third act and she does play an important role she's more than just the stock cliche love interest. I gotta applaud the writing for that. The third act of this movie is pro I have to say it's the best third act of the whole trilogy. Uh, the movie establishes a little bit more urgency compared to the other two films by the fact that when Marty traveled to 1885 uh, their, their fuel line got shot during a uh, run in with some of the Native Americans. So because they're out of gas and gasoline wasn't invented yet in 1885 they have to resort to desperate measures to get the car rolling to 88 miles an hour and they have to resort help from a train to help push the to help push the DeLorean. That sequence is so insane it's so intense and I love the score in that sequence from Alan Silvestri and I get a pure adrenaline rush seeing the pure urgency and passion that Zemeckis brought to the final act in the final installment of this trilogy and I highly enjoyed the way this trilogy wrapped up. I do have a few issues with Back to the Future Part 3. I do think I can see why some people didn't like 3 uh, criticism I hear for the third installment is it feels like a rehash of the first film. And yeah, there are some similar plot elements. Uh, the characters get stuck in one time period. The car is broken down and they have to fix the car and get back to 1985. Much like the first film. But it's not a complete rehash. And while there's similar beats in all the films like in Back to the Future Part 2, uh, what I really like is that while they do share similarities in each film, it seems like Zemeckis always finds a way to add something new to the similarities to make each film unique. And with Back to the Future Part 3, we had the Western angle and also Doc having a love interest, which make the third film just as fresh as the other two films. And I think it made the film all the more fun for us. I didn't mind the similarities in plot between the first and third film because the unique vibe the third installment still had and it's cool seeing the nods to the classic westerns i mean they even had pat buttram in this film uh character actor that i just love especially being a hardcore disney fan he was the sheriff of nottingham and robin hood they call me slow, but I do my job. Do, 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 do. And I do have some other issues as well. We have, I have some nitpicky issues with some of the time travel. I think in this movie especially, especially the whole idea of them having to retrieve Doc back from 1985 because they see a gravestone that he got shot. And yeah, I don't really get how you can die in one timeline and then your other self in the normal timeline is still standing. I've never really got that, to be honest. But, I mean, I love the characters and I love the narrative. So, at the end of the day, I can overlook some plot holes in this story. And just enjoy the movie for what it is. Uh, like I said, I love the Western vibe. I love the score and the overall direction. I didn't. Even, I almost forgot to bring up uh, Thomas F. Wilson in here as Mad Dog Buford Tannen, the antagonist of this film, uh, 
like the great grandfather of Biff. And to be honest, I love this character more than I ever did Biff. I think he's just so over the top and is such a hilariously hammy bad guy. I just love what he brought as this character. It was amazing. Uh, all around Back to the Future Part 3 is easily the most underrated film of the whole trilogy, and I actually think it's better than Part 2. I know some people don't agree with me on that, but to be honest, I actually think 3 had a better structure. I like the unique Western angle, and I think it had the best third act of the entire trilogy. At the end of the day, I'm going to give Back to the Future Part 3 a 4.5 out of 5 stars, and on the 100 point scale, an 84 out of 100. Oh, can't forget about ZZ Top. Double Back is so uh, such an underrated song. Man. Got to double back again. Double back again. So that wraps up my review of Back to the Future Part 3 as part of the Robert Zemeckis Marathon. Where I review his complete filmography from his directing debut to his most recent effort. Join me in the next installment of the Zemeckis Marathon where I'll be tackling the 1991 cult classic Death Becomes Her. That is a favorite from a lot of Zemeckis fans, and I can't wait to share my thoughts on that insane film. I'm such a big fan of Zemeckis, and I love tackling the, the amount of great films he's made over the years. So if you've seen Back to the Future Part 3, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? Whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. And if your comments are respectful, your comments can be potentially seen in future comment shout-out videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button to see more content, and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I hope you all have an amazing day, God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!